Microwave tubes, traveling wave tubes, first part, series on microwave engineering, lecture number 4.41. Traveling wave tubes or TWTs, in short, are microwave amplifiers. Microwave tubes, they are well known for their broadband nature. They are widely used on board satellites in establishing communication between satellite and earth stations. These devices employ an electron gun to emit electrons and a, a slow wave structure, usually a helix and a plate, collector plate to receive, to collect electrons. The signal to be amplified is fed to the slow, slow wave structure at one end and its uh, amplified version is taken out from the other end of the slow wave structure. The emitted electrons from the gun, they form into a beam and travel through the slow wave structure along the axis of the slow wave structure. While traveling, the beam, electron beam, interacts with the axial component of the signal that is running in the slow wave structure resulting in bunch formation and then transfer of energy from bunches to the signal. The net result is amplification of the input signal. In the present session, the first session on traveling wave tubes, the focus is on basic features historical background and structural features of these devices. Now, let us move further to the core session to study, to know more deeply about these devices. We consider some general points pertaining to the tubes, traveling wave, traveling wave tubes to begin with. Traveling wave tubes are TWTs, in short are microwave amplifiers well known for their broadband nature. Widely used on board the satellites, they have the highest bandwidth of any amplifier tube. Bandwidth ranges from 30 to 120 percent. Their power rating can be increased to several kilowatts by using an interaction region consisting of a set of coupled cavities. In general, TWT power output is determined by the efficiency with which energy in the electron beam is converted to microwave energy, frequently called interaction efficiency or beam efficiency. Efficiency is relatively small ranging from 20% to 40%. But now some progress is made in the technology used for designing TWTs. These developments enhanced the efficiency levels that are possible from TWTs to 50 to 70%. Now, before going further, one point requires to be elaborated. TWTs are well known for their broadband nature, for their capability to give higher bandwidths. What is the reason why they are able to be broadband in nature? The reason is in the slow wave structure, which is a non-resonant circuit. In the stru structure, if resonant circuit is there, it limits the bandwidth of the device. In TWTs, it is not resonant structures. It is non-resonant structures that are used. So the factor that limits bandwidth, it is not there in TWTs. Hence, it becomes capable of enormous bandwidth. TWTs are linear beam tubes in which interaction between beam and RF field is continuous over a length. Due to interaction with the field, the beam gets converted into bunches and as they travel along the length of the tube, they become more and more dense. In these tubes, the bunching of electron beam is 
almost complete due to continuous interaction with the signal and as a consequence the bunched electron deliver large power to the signal ultimately giving out very high gain so these are also associated with higher gains the reason behind the higher gains is continuous interaction between signal and the electron beam the continuous interaction results in almost complete bunching when bunches are complete they become capable of delivering huge amounts of energy to the signal thereby increasing its strength ultimately what we have is higher gains from the device pwt is used a slow wave structure a slow wave circuit it is non resonant hence capable of enormous bandwidth notice resonant circuits are associated with narrow bandedness if it is non resonant then narrow bandedness it becomes replaced by broad bandedness resulting in enormous bandwidth the power output p out of the device it can be expressed by this formula k eta p power 5 by 2 or turned off where v is applied voltage to thermionic cathode eta is interaction efficiency and the constant k is called pervience an important design parameter since it is totally determined by the electron gun dimensions this expression p out it is for electron gun tw it is employ electron gun electron gun emits electrons this p out power output this expression pertains to electron gun the invention of the helix tw what is helix tw tw stands for traveling wave tube helix is the slow wave structure that is employed in the design of tw other structures are also possible the invention of helix tw in 1942 43 is widely attributed to rolf kampfner nils linden blad however working at radio corporation of america rca in usa did patent a device in may 1940 that was remarkably similar to kampfner's tw this device was refined by kampfner john pierce and lester young field at bell labs now a few points comparing tw amplifiers with klystron amplifier tw amplifiers klystron amplifiers both uh, are microwave amplifiers both are microwave tubes a few points comparing them with uh, each other interaction of electron beam and rf field in tw is continuous over the entire length of the circuit whereas in the klystron it occurs only at the gaps of a few resonant cavities so in tw it is, it is continuous over length whereas in klystron amplifiers it is happens only at the gaps of resonant cavities where in the tw is a propagating wave whereas in klystrons it is not so rather we can say in klystrons it is a standing wave kind of thing in the coupled cavity tw there is coupling effect between cavities whereas each cavity in klystron operates independently several different slow wave structures are available tw can employ any one of them. helix is one such slow wave structure coupled cavities is also a slow wave structure which can be employed by tw's here a comparison is being given in the third point between coupled cavity tw and klystron amplifiers in coupled cavity tw there exists coupling between the cavities whereas in klystron amplifiers there also we use two or more cavities but there exists no coupling as already mentioned tw's employ slow wave structures a few points regarding the slow wave structures in twts the electron beam traveling at a few percent of speed of light requires to deliver energy to the signal propagating at a speed nearly equal to that of light 
to make the interaction between these two and energy delivery to the signal possible the signal has to be slowed down slow wave structures are special circuits used in all traveling wave amplifiers to generate propagation of flow waves they reduce wave velocity in a certain direction so that the electron beam and signal wave can interact apart from helix corrugated wave guide folded back line interdigital line zigzag line coupled cavities are other slow wave structures used in tws so notice here the important point is this let us suppose there is a signal traveling like left to right and it requires to strengthen this signal it requires to amplify this signal then normally what is done is to amplify the signal an electron beam it is used and uh, this beam is energized to higher energy levels and then the beam transfers this is electron beam let us say this is electron beam this signal and this fellow transfers energy to the signal now to transfer energy from beam to signal one condition requires to be fulfilled what is that condition both must be traveling approximately at the same velocity this is traveling signal is a traveling wave signal is a traveling wave so it is traveling with certain velocity and energy has to be given to the signal the energy right now is with electron beam the electron beam is able to transfer energy to the signal only when the beam is also traveling with a velocity at least nearly equal approximately equal to velocity of the signal but the signal velocity is approximately c velocity of light 3 into 10 power 8 meters per second accelerating electron beam to such high velocity high velocity is impossible so what they do is they reduce the velocity of the signal to such a low levels to such a low values to which the electron beam can be accelerated electron beam can be accelerated to certain velocities and the signal is reduced in its velocity to such a values at which the electron beam is traveling now interaction is possible because both are traveling approximately at the same velocities as a result of interaction if things are arranged appropriately energy transfer happens from electron beam to the signal mm. to reduce the velocity of the signal to small values slow wave structures are used helix corrugated wave guide folded back line etc etc are widely used are being used in the design of tws here is shown the block diagram of tws this is gun assembly it doesn't require much explanation electron beam it gets emitted it is accelerated and focused and here is a helix structure at one end signal input is given at the other end amplified version is taken out the beam is traveling along the axis of the helix the signal which is traveling along the length of the helix with a velocity which is approximately equal to velocity of light but its velocity along the axis axial velocity it is not velocity of light it is far far lesser to the velocity of light the dimensions of the helix they are selected in such a way that the axial velocity of the signal is approximately or nearly equal to velocity of the electron beam as velocities are nearly equal interaction takes place this interaction leads to bunch formation the bunch formation ultimately results in energy transfer from electron beam to the signal after delivering the energy to the signal the electron beam comes out of the helix coil and this is then collected by collector assembly here one can also see certain uh, magnetic coils they are there for uh, focusing the beam flow wave structures are being shown here in a is helix in b is corrugated wave guide this one in c is a folded back line d is interdigital line e is zigzag line these are all different flow wave structures that are used in the design of traveling wave tubes a few points regarding helix structure here our main focus is how it is able to bring helix is able to bring the velocity of the signal from 
थ्री थ्री इंटू टेन पावर एट मीटर्स पर सेकेंड टू स्मॉल वैल्यूज वैल्यूज विच करस्पॉन्ड टू द वेलासिटी ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रॉन बीम हेलिक्स इज स्लो वेव स्ट्रक्चर इट्स पर्पज इज टू ब्रिंग डाउन द सिग्नल वेलासिटी टू दट ऑफ द बीम कंसिडर द सिग्नल प्रोपोगेशन थ्रू हेलिकल स्लो वेव स्ट्रक्चर विथ वेलासिटी सी इट्स फेज वेलासिटी इन एक्शियल डायरेक्शन इज ओमेगा बाय बीटा फेज वेलासिटी इज ऑलवेज ओमेगा बाय बीटा ओमेगा इज फ्रीक्वेंसी angular frequency beta is phase shift constant in the axial direction notice this point in the axial direction beta you have to consider in the axial direction so let us suppose wave is traveling like this beta in the direction of wave propagation it assumes one value if you consider beta in some other direction it assumes some other value signal is traveling along the helical coil so the signal may have one beta along the coil but here beta is along the axis it is c p by square root of p square plus i d whole square it can also be expressed as c sin psi this whole thing can be approximated to c p by pi d of course c is c p stands for pitch d is dia of the helix coil here in the expression p is pitch d is diameter and psi is pitch angle of the helix coil as the sin psi is less than or equal to 1 by selecting the angle psi appropriately it is possible to set any value ranging from 0 to c for the wave velocity of signal in axial direction an important aspect pertaining to the field in the helix is that axial electric field notice axial electric field signal is traveling along the length of the helix so there exists certain amount of field along axial direction that field it is here denoted by e x y z is periodic along axial direction that direction with a periodicity l equal to helix pitch p so periodicity l is equal to p this field can be expressed as a linear combination of several spatial harmonics using fourier theorem any periodic uh, variation can be expressed as sum of several harmonics that is fourier theorem so here he says e x y z is n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity e n x y e power minus j eta n z notice this expression assumes the helix lying or predability lying along z axis if uh, it it was lying in x axis z has to be replaced by x here beta n is a phase constant of nth mode and is given by this formula beta n is beta not plus 2 pi n by l of course here l equal to p pitch the phase velocities of various spatial components of the wave thus are given by this formula vpn is phase velocity in the previous slide it was shown that vp phase velocity is always omega by beta in the field that is in axial direction there exists several components each component naturally will be having its own phase velocity their phase velocities they are given by this formula vpn is omega by beta n which is equal to omega by beta n equal to beta not plus 2 pi n by l so far our attention happened to be on slow wave structure and the interaction of the signal with the electron beam through flow wave structures another important part a critical part in the structure of traveling wave tubes is attenuator to understand its significance its importance in the operation of traveling wave tubes we have to consider certain points these points are mentioned here oscillations are possible in this high gain de device especially due to significant reflections out of load mismatch along the slow wave structures very close coupling that exists in slow wave circuits further aggravates the problem notice the point is this this is slow wave structure this is high gain device so here the feeding is a small signal but the output is because of high gain output signal strength is very high now by some chance let us suppose the part of this uh, high amplitude output if it travels back and reaches the input then what happens 
This fellow again travels towards output side and while traveling it undergoes huge amount of amplification reaches the output again it comes back to the input side again gets amplified so what happens is this kind of reflections back towards input side leads to oscillations leads to instability to understand the nature the cause of instability we have to note one important aspect first time when the output travels towards input let us say it is 1% of the output reached the input and it gets amplified it appears here amplified version amplified reflected wave appears at the output increasing the output level now 1% of this increased output then again reflect reflected back to input this again gets amplified reaches the output rising the output level further and further now 1% of this present output it is going to be somewhat huge it again gets reflected reaches input again gets amplified reaches output rising the output to enormous high levels ultimately what exactly is happening is some kind of feedback output reaching input getting amplified reaching output again so this kind of cycle this kind of uh, cyclic uh, movement of the signal happens between input and output ultimately leading to harmful oscillations this is amplifier oscillations are always unwanted as a cure to unwanted oscillations intuitively attenuator is used and obviously it has the subsidiary effect of reducing the gain the attenuator may be a lossy metallic coating such as aquedog or panthal on the surface of the glass tube attenuator affects both forward and reverse wave the reverse wave almost gets ineffective but the forward wave is able to continue past the attenuator and grow further because the bunching is unaffected energy transfer to this wave continues as before the attenuator these are some of the things which i want to share with you which i have to share with you to recap historical background structural features amplification mechanism pertaining to traveling wave tubes they are covered in the present session to certain depth then for now hope you have enjoyed the session see you again in another session soon bye bye